Good afternoon, everyone. Before we get started, just a reminder, except for the people on the dais and myself, actively speaking, please keep your mask on at all times. And everyone, please remember to mute or silence yourself. Again, good afternoon. My name is Matthew White. I'm the Director of University Relations. And on behalf of our visionary president, Dr. William R. Harvey, who is celebrating his 44th year of presidency here at Hampton, I would like to take this time to formally welcome our guests here to our home by the sea on what is truly a historic day. Hampton University is known for many firsts. And today we add another to that list. As we are here to announce, Hampton University is the first HBCU to join the CAA. I know it is an honor for myself to do this introduction, and we're gonna start things off first with our commissioner, Mr. Joseph <clears throat> F.D. Antonio Esquire, as well as our athletic director, Mr. Eugene Marshall Jr. In his fifth year as commissioner, Mr. D'Antonio, has become just the second person to serve as commissioner in the 35 year history of the CAA. During his tenure, three conference teams have captured national championships and has worked closely with the league's presidents and athletic administrators to achieve a high level of success athletically with the educational framework of each institution. Dr. Excuse me, Mr. D'Antonio is among the most visible commissioners in the nation and enjoys interacting with student athletes, coaches, and fans on our campuses. His practice with the Commissioner Initiative, in which he participates in on-campus workouts with each CAA championship team, has become extremely popular. Under Mr. D'Antonio's leadership, the CAA has entered a four-year, seven-figure annual partnership with Flow Sports to provide live on-demand coverage for the league's 22 sports. More than 300 live events will be broadcasted on Flow Sports each year. The CAA has also expanded its relationship with CBS Sports Network, that has resulted in 11 regular season men's basketball games being televised during the 2019-20 season, in addition to the semifinals and the finals of the CAA Men's Basketball Championship. Mr. Eugene Marshall is our Director of Athletics and the Chief Athletic Officer responsible for the day-to-day -day management, administration, and operations of Hampton University's 17 athletic programs, 350 student athletes, so on. Also with direct oversight on areas that include club sports, intramurals, recreational activities, finance, excuse me, business, finance, marketing promotions, and the Hampton Convocation Center. Mr. Marshall is in his eighth year at Hampton University, 34th year as a senior athletic administrator, 37 years in intercollegiate athletics. And at this time, I turn it over to our commissioner. Well, thank you, Matt. Certainly appreciate that introduction. Pleasure to be with you today. Pleasure to with all of you folks. I'm going to alert everyone up front. I grew up about 20 miles south of Boston. They tell me that I still have just a slight accent. So if I, if I happen to say car or yard, and you might not understand what I'm saying, uh, I appreciate your patience as we go through the day today. Uh, so good morning and good afternoon. Uh, Dr. Harvey, Dean, members of the media, coaches, student athletes, and members of the Hampton University community, it is truly a great day to be a pirate. On behalf of CAA, thank you. On behalf of CAA Board of Director Chair and Drexel President John Fry, as well as all CAA presidents, chancellors, and athletic directors, it's an honor to be here today to welcome Hampton University to the Colonial Athletic Association. I'd like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Harvey and to Jean for their efforts in helping to make today a reality. Over 15 months ago, the CAA began a planning process that was focused on its future success, specifically was its desire to find a more sustainable and competitive model for institutions that comprise the membership of the conference that would position the CAA as one of the premier FCS conferences in the country. This sustainable and competitive model was built upon the following foundations and priorities. Number one, 
a student athlete first focus that emphasizes the significant value of higher education. Number two, financial sustainability. Number three, commitment by each institution in the conference to elevate the competitiveness of its men's and women's basketball programs on a national level, as well as elevate each institution's overall investment in all of their other sports and the competitiveness of those programs. Number four, maintaining the CAA football conference as one of the premier FCS conferences in the country. And number five, active presidential and chancellor involvement and leadership. And I can't say enough today about the role that all of our presidents and chancellors have played in this initiative. The process was driven with a determined focus on the conference's newly formed vision statement. And a special public thank you goes out to William and Mary, President Catherine Rowe, and Elon President Dr. Connie Book for their work on our new vision statement. And that vision statement reads, CAA institutions work together to advance nationally competitive college athletic programs, coupled with outstanding academic programs that empower student athletes as whole persons to strive at the highest level in every aspect of their lives. Our athletic fields, arenas, tracks, courts, pitches, pools, and gyms are valued learning spaces. And our coaches are inspiring teachers and mentors. We champion a new collegiate model of Division I athletics, embracing transformation that advances our core commitments of one, academic excellence, two, inclusive excellence, three, student athlete well being, four, competing at a championship level, and five, sustainability. In its newly formed partnership with Hampton University, the CAA welcomes one of the most prestigious institutions in the world and knows that Hampton fully embodies and embraces the vision and core commitments of the CAA. Today, the CAA, along with Hampton University, Monmouth University, and Stony Brook University, embark on a new beginning. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose statue sits among those of many other great leaders on the Hampton campus in Legacy Park, once said, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Intercollegiate athletics, as we know it, is embroiled in a time of significant challenges and impending changes. As the winds of change continue to swirl, through its newly formed partnership, Hampton University and the CAA have together not only taken the first step, but have taken a gigantic leap in properly positioning themselves for future success and longevity. In closing, I'd like to take a minute to recognize and applaud Hampton President Dr. William Harvey on an illustrious career. Your 44 years as president of Hampton, Hampton University have been transformative, and your incredible vision and leadership have cemented your legacy for generations to come. I am truly honored to be here today with you to celebrate this special day in the history of your home by the sea. Thank you again for the opportunity to say a few words, and go Pirates! Mr. Marshall. Well, on behalf of our president, Dr. William R. Harvey, uh, the administrative council, uh, our athletic staff, but most of all, the student athletes. I'm not going to leave out the coaches, but I'm going to talk to the student athletes first. You're the reason that we're making this move. You have shown hard work, dedication, and commitment, and the ability to continue to rise as you've rose through Hampton as you go on to your careers, but this is 
to put each and every one of you in a position to be successful. I want to thank the coaching staffs, head coaches, assistant coaches, and support staff for their efforts in making this happen. If you didn't do the job on the field, the court, the track, the pool, we wouldn't be able to have this conversation. It's easy for me to go out with Dr. Harvey's approval to look at conference opportunities, but I got to have something behind me. That's why I want to thank each and every one of you in this room for what you have done to make my job easier to talk about Hampton University. Uh, one of the things that I want to talk about also is people are going to ask the question, well, the conference goes uh, from Maine down to uh, North Car South Carolina. Well, we're still going to be uh, a regional institution. We're still going to compete heavily in the southern region. We will have some crossovers. But why CAA? We have a lot of alumni and, and student, future Hampton students in uh, the city of Boston and the state of Massachusetts. We have alumni distinguished in the state of Connecticut, and we recruit from there. We have a lot of alumni in New York, New Jersey, especially out on the island, Philadelphia, the uh, DMV, uh, the North Carolina area, when you talk about Charlotte and Raleigh, going all the way down to Myrtle Beach. So we will not only have East Coast alumni support, but we will have the opportunity to build leaders and champions from a pool that will go from at least Boston down to South Carolina. So to me, uh, it's a win-win. Now, I will take a plug for my alma mater. We'll be competing against Northeastern University up in Boston. So I, I do have uh, some fond feelings there. But in a business decision, we have the coaches. We have the student athletes. This will help us from alumni perspective. But more importantly, we have the support. And I know some of our um, university leadership team is not here, but I want to go out of my way and thank them because they're the team behind the team. Dr. Inman is here, Vice President for Administrative Services. Um, they make things happen. All this stuff that we do on a regular basis, and especially with COVID, does not happen overnight. But with the support and the leadership of Dr. Inman, we've been able to put our teams safe and healthy on the field of competition. And we've been able to set an example for other conferences and universities on how to manage COVID. So you need to see the team behind the team. We also have a lot of our sponsors here, which I want to thank for what they've done. Our alumni, the Booster Club, Hampton Nation, I want to thank you because without your support, this move wouldn't happen. And I'll just close by saying, uh, and the commission already said it's a great day uh, to be a pirate. Well, uh, effective July 1, it'll be a great day to be a member of the Colonial Athletic Association. Thank you. At this time, we'll open up to any questions from the Assembled Press. The question was, could the commissioner speak to what uh, bringing the HBCU means to the CAA? Well, it's a, it's a true honor to bring an HBCU school into the CAA, but, but I look at it in a much, on a much grander scale than that. It's a true honor to bring an institution with the academic and athletic reputation like Hampton into the conference. What Dr. Harvey, his team, have accomplished over the last 44 years here at Hampton is nothing short of extraordinary from the endowment, to the class offerings, to the national reputation, to what it's done for its students is second to none. And that's what resonates most with me today. Just the, the impact that this institution has had on so many young men and women under Dr. Harvey's leadership. And to think that they're now a member of the CAA 
is something really special. Any other questions from the media? Stephen? Well, this is the conference we want to be in, but I'm the type of person, I don't close the door or open the door on anything. God leads the way. You know, um, I came down here with a charge to try to better our conference, and it led us to a stopover at the Big South, which I will say uh, we had a great relationship in the Big South, great competition, great fellowship. Um, but an opportunity came up for us to be in the CAA. This is where we want to be, but I can't speak for the future. Any other questions? Marty? The question was, how did Hampton and the CAA come together? And go ahead, Mr. So these are big decisions. Uh, the, these are not decisions that happen overnight. And as you heard in my opening comments, this has been a discussion amongst our leadership for, the, for well over the past 15 months. And I think any time you enter into decisions like these, I used a term earlier in an interview that I did. It's really a totality of circumstances analysis that gets you to the final end result. <coughs> Excuse me. That being said, as it looked to expand its membership, the CAA was focused on a few things that were very important to it in terms of looking at potential new members. One was there needed to be a geographical fit. We're fortunate enough to know that that geographical fit could occur in the, in the northern area or in potentially in the mid-Atlantic area. Number two, we, we were intentional that any institutions that we were going to be talking to had to have a strong academic background and reputation. Just by the way, I've answered some of the questions earlier here today. Uh, there is no question in my mind that Hampton University, one of those institutions. And then finally, we focused on institutions that were committed to investing in their student athletes and the future success of their athletic programs. And I know in my conversations with both Dr. Harvey and with Gene that Hampton is well positioned in that area as well. So that, that's really what the, what the match between CAA and Hampton, where it, where it comes from. Uh, the analysis of Stony Brook, candidly, was really no different. Uh, you are correct. They are currently a member of the conference in football. And certainly our familiarity with that institution was maybe a little greater than some of the institutions that we had spoken with. But in and of, at the end of the day, I should say, uh, the analysis was the same and focusing primarily on those three factors as we tried to move things forward. Any additional questions from the media? All right. Well, we thank you for your attendance here today. We'll have one-on-one -on -one opportunities here for the media at the backdrop here behind me. And once again, thank you for joining us here today as Hampton July 1 joins the CEO.
That whole time, y'all just didn't know it. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Y'all sit in front of the backdrop. <laughs> Certainly under Dr. Harvey's leadership and Gene's leadership, there's no question that the Hampton fits with all this kind of place. From a historic standpoint, I mean, being the first HBCU school to be part of the, the, uh, the picture here, I mean, you, you mentioned that the academics and, and the athletics play a big part of that, but that's a pretty big milestone. It's an incredible milestone. And just the institution as a whole, the reputation that it has, and what Dr. Harvey has done here over the course of his career is nothing short of amazing, and, and we couldn't be any more privilege as a conference to have him. And then lastly for me, how challenging has this landscape been for you? I mean, you know, you guys must have several sleepless nights with the uh, ever-shifting landscape of college athletics. Well, college athletics at the present time is in a challenging time period, uh, let alone adding membership-related matters in the mix. But the CAA, we're just so fortunate to have a great group of presidents, a great group of athletic directors, and we work together to navigate that landscape. That's what makes the conference really special. circumstances and just analyzing the, the entire situation, uh, our leadership under under the new model that we felt as though would allow our conference to be both financially sustainable and competitive going forward, had honed in on the fact that expansion was one of the way of us achieving that model. And as we began to have those conversations, certain institutions obviously came to the forefront of put on our radar for the reasons that I just mentioned. If you look at those scenarios, geographic fit, strong academic reputation, commitment to student athletes and athletic programs, Hampton fell right into our real house as we had to have that conversation. Is it just the reality, as you mentioned, of the, of the landscape of the college football as an example, just the fact that there's got to be a lot more teams even ask, you know, are they there to stay? You know, it's ever seen. It's just, that's just the reality of being a college. Well, that, that, that is the reality of the world we live in today. We're, we're certainly optimistic and hopeful that Hampton will be a member of the CAA for a long time to come. Uh, but, the, but the reality is we, we work and live in a, in a changing business. All you have to do is look at things associated with name, image, and likeness, the result of the Alston case, and other things now going on with the Transformation Committee at the NCAA to know that the landscape is constantly changing. And the importance of us as a division of our conference is to make sure that we're changing in that landscape. And you know, always trying to put ourselves in better situations. All right, we got Dr. Harvey right here. I'm behind you, Ryan. I'm behind you, sir. What's my fault. How's everybody? Wonderful. How are you doing, sir? How's it going? Be able to play a spin and I'm about 75 or 74. Wow. Today, you feel 45. See how, see how happy you are about all this, you know?
Is this a nice feather in your cap on the way this back. out? Well, I think it's a feather in the university. I think that the vision is set at all. You know, we are first rate uh, university. Actually, I've been trying for 30 years. I first uh, contacted the commission in the CAA 30 years ago. And I wanted to be a commissioner and uh, President Fry. A lot of people because they were very, very open. We had uh, conversations and uh, in fact, it's a very So it's a natural fit, and the fact that we've been trying to do this for about 30 years, I'm as happy as I can be. You just said it's taking you 30 years to do this. Is this a dream realized for you? Is this a dream come true? It's one of the dreams. You know, Hampton has done so many things, you know, becoming a Carnegie Commission model with my university. Doing the things that we have done. Uh, we've got four satellites in the world. We've got the world's largest proton beam cancer treatment center. I could go on and on. So it's just one of them. And it, it calls, it's because of the team. I tell everybody, the team is a dream. I am the team leader. Yes, I'm a tough team leader. I don't apologize. But we have been able to do the kinds of things together. So it is a dream for the team. think that uh, I believe strongly in the whole concept of student athletes, not just athletes. And I think that uh, with our student body, uh, people such as you and others, we are doing really, really well. So it's just a natural fit as it relates to the concept of student athletes. Yeah, I was about to say, good as I can be. How you doing? I got Coach Six Women's Basketball going on. Hey, I can do it. Let it be too. I can live in Maine. Hey, I've been to uh, anytime you get a chance to go to the what you're doing, what you're doing. I actually have had it. Oh, it helps everything from recruiting on down. So, you know, we had a situation there where we feel like going to the CAA is going to be huge for us. You know, at all levels. What do you think? It's so